LeBron, uh, he shot one free throw in game one. And in the last series, um, he took the second fewest three free throws of any series you've played. Um, is, there a, is there something going on here? Is there a pattern as far as how you've been officiated in these playoffs? Oh, it's not my concern. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. I don't have a whistle. Um, I know I'm getting hit, grabbed, and pushed just like everybody else out on the floor. Um, you know, so, but it's, I mean, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't worry about that or stop me from, you know, being in the paint. You know, I've shot um, the least amount of free throws in my playoff career so far to start off a playoff series. And uh, I probably lived in the paint more uh, than any year. So, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, but all that I can do is control what I can control. That's my mindset is continue to continue to attack and put pressure on the defense. Hey, um, you, you just brought it up. I mean, you have lived in the paint more in the, so far in these playoffs than ever before in your career. What what played into that? What, why are you going there? Uh, I don't know. I'm just. Uh, it's just you know. Just I got. We got a lot of guys that. Uh, uh, you know, they do so with so many great things on the perimeter that I don't want to be one of those guys as well. You know, I can, I can do things out there to, you know, help my guys get in the opportunities, but uh, we have to have uh, pain attacks as well. We have to have a, a well balanced, and, uh, and I'm part of the pain attack, Kyrie, uh, as well as Kevin, uh, trying to just even up our balance as far as scoring and what we do. You are programmed to play through it when you're not getting calls like that, but is that a real, is that a tough mental challenge when you're not getting that whistle and you have, you know, you got to go to the hole? Uh, well, it's not that I know I gotta go there, but it's just you know it's my mindset is how I'm playing. Uh, you know, obviously late in the game, last game, you guys seen me get smacked in the face on one of my drives uh, with a no call. You know, and um, you know, but I had to get up and get back on defense, and I was able to get a contest on Schroeder, who had been shooting the ball exceptionally well. You know, to that point, it was able to affect his shot. So, uh, you know, like I said, I can't really. Uh, you know, let it get the best of me. Um, you know, I just got to continue to go in there and hopefully, uh, you know, I get a couple um, and the game's coming soon. When you see Dwayne had the performance he had in game six down the stretch in the first round and then in game one, you know, being able to pull that overtime win out, does that affect you at all in terms of motivation going into the next game that you would play? Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, anytime, uh, you know, one of my best friends is able to go out there and perform the way he performs, it's definitely motivating. Uh, you know, I was looking forward to game one after watching him in game six, you know, the way he was able to close that game out. And, and obviously he just, you know, they all gritted last night, you know, not only, you know, Miami, but Toronto, it was just a, it was a slugfest watching that game and, uh, and they was able to pull out as well. So, but anytime I'm, I'm able to watch, you know, my guys do work, it's definitely motivating for sure. Steals, how much of it is being able to lock in with one team and knowing what their sets are? Well, it's not. Some of it is, you know, knowing the sets, knowing what those guys like to do, and also having some a little anticipation, you know, and uh, and I'm able to, uh, to be in the right spot at the right time and, and, and get some key, key steals like I did down the stretch in game one. Um, also, at times, though, I was caught uh, flat foot and I gave up a backdoor cut to Baysmore. He got a dunk. I gave up an offensive rebound in the fourth quarter to Baysmore. He was able to shovel pass off to, to Paul Millsap for a layup. So I also got to do a better job of that. Um, so, um, you know, I'll be more conscious of that. But just being in the right place at the right time and understanding what they want to do and just trying to read and react. We're always talking about adjustments from game to game. How much of that is is a, uh, a media creation and, and, and how much of that is is actually legitimate behind the scenes for you guys as players and the coaching staff? Uh, well, I mean, I think... Uh, it's always half and half as far as media creation and what's actually going on behind the scenes. And that's what makes our game that great. You know, you guys are able to uh, make it bigger than what it really is, but at the same time, there's some truth to it. So, um, you know, for us, I think the game in between the game and understanding um, what you did in game one, you can't really do in game two. Now, that doesn't mean you change your whole philosophy. We know that. Um, but as far as, you know, the way you're, how we played in game one, we have to be much better um, going into tonight. LeBron, Cal Corbett doesn't shoot a lot. A lot, but you guys focus on him a lot. What's the challenge of guarding him? Uh, it's uh, it's focus 48 minutes. You, a guy like that can uh, break open a game in, in 90 seconds. He can hit you with three, four straight threes in 90 seconds, and it can open up a game. And uh, uh, we understand how important he is to their team, but how important he is to the series in general. I mean, he's uh, one of the best shooters that we have in our game today. Um, and we have to pay close attention to him uh, when he's out on the floor. Uh, your opinion of the last two-minute report.
sport with us recently. What do you think of just instant replay in general in, in the sport? Do you think it's enhanced? I guess it's come a, across during your career, so at one point you didn't have it. Uh, instant replay? I think it, it you know, it's, um, it's beneficial. Guys, you know, I think the refs, uh, you know, the game is, is, is played so fast at times that, um, you know, sometimes they may not know for sure. So they're able to go and, and take a look at it um, and, and, and make the call from there. Um, so. Um, I also know that the replay goes all the way to wherever, to caucus, somewhere where someone is also reviewing it too, uh, which I think is kind of tough, but, you know, it's, it's been good so far. Um, I didn't think Joe Johnson's shot last night hit the rim, though. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm just one of the few guys that's watching the game. Have you, I mean, have you allowed your mind to go there at all, this possibility that you might see the Heat in, in a conference final? Um, no, I think... Uh, I think naturally, of course. I mean, um, but that's been since I came back. Um, you know, it would be great to play against those guys in the, in the postseason. But I've always, throughout my whole career, I was, I've always wanted to go against Wade in the playoff series. I mean, that's just, we've always talked about it even before we became teammates in, in 10. So, um, you know, I don't think it's been, it's not been heavy on my mind, but it's crossed my mind throughout my whole career. Uh, there's a reporter going to act in the movie Space Jam 2. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Well, I, I have a great team that's handling all my things, all my fares off the floor. Um, ever since I signed with Warner Brothers, we've been looking to do some things and um, and figure out some things that best fit both sides. But um, my, my team is handling that, and uh, you know I, I'm not going to take my focus off what my, my job is right now, and that's uh, you know being the postseason right now. You talked about the physicality you experienced the other day when you got hit in the head. I was watching the end of this San Antonio game and all the discussions since then. There's a school of thought that says, you know, the NBA says, well, there's five fouls there. And then the school thought that the players need to settle it at this time of the year. How difficult is it to draw that line, and where would you draw it if, if you were the king of the world? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I think at this time, um, you know, the game is definitely played more physical. Um, but, you know, you always have to just – you play the game on how the officials are calling it, you know, and, and you have um, um, some officials, some games that allow you to play more physical than others. And uh, – and that's okay. I mean, that's why you have different, you know, we have so many different refs that do so many great things, but they're all different and they do a great job of coming together as a team. So you have to realize how they're calling the game and be able to adjust from that. Do you prefer it when they let you use the body? I mean, and you do. Well, I'm prepared. a body guy. I will, I'll always use my body on the floor. So, you know, my game doesn't change too much in the, in the sense of that, you know, from whatever, um, you know, staff that we have out that night. But you have to see how they, you know, Obviously, you know, the, the great retired Joey Crawford will call the game a lot different than some of our other reps that we have in our league. So you have to adjust to that. You have to adjust. LeBron, when you get beaten up and battered and hit in the face and there's no calls, do you think that kind of gives the other team a license to continue to try to get to you and attack you? Well, they, well, they can't. I can't. They won't get to me. Um, I continue to get up. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Um, you know, I just want to try to, you know, make plays to help my team succeed. and. Uh, you know, like I said, if we can stop a run by me going to the free throw line or me putting pressure on the defense, then I'm all for that. But, um, you know, I've been, I've been doing this for a while now, so I don't think it's ever gotten to me. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you.